Okay. Um, so my background was I was hired as a webmaster by the computer science department because I didn't do very well in my degree and didn't want to and couldn't do a PhD and didn't want to go and get a real job and I kind of never left. Um, so I've been very lucky to be involved in the web from the early days and to be around semantic web researchers right from the start, um, be in the room while lots of people are having interesting discussions and so I kind of got a leg up on seeing problems before other people were aware of them. I spent uh, a long time as lead developer of ePrints, which is a early research, uh, university research repository, institutional repository tool, which is still quite heavily in use around the world. Um, and after that, I set up data.ac.uk, which was a moderate failure. Um, it was an attempt to try and do open data between universities, but the equipment data sharing I've just mentioned was a success and is now run by JISC and that uses um, open data to collect a list of equipment from every university once a day and publish a combined data set. Um, what I did a lot of was looking at the problems we were having as early adopters doing open data and we weren't focusing on research data, we were researching on infrastructure data, so information um, about the university, its structure, its events, its people, um, and we tried to learn from the mistakes and articulate what we'd learned. But early on, one of the problems I found was that everyone kept saying, oh, you don't want to do that. And often the real reason was their data was crap and they didn't want other people seeing it because then they'd feel look bad, but they'd only done the data to the quality that achieved the task they were doing. And to cheer people up who are going down the same route as me, uh, as us, we made a bingo sheet, which um, I've learned to put this link in the top of this bingo sheet because if I don't, people uh, used to photograph it in when I was giving a talk and put it on Twitter without the explanation of what to do next. But um, some of these may seem familiar, some of them may not, um, but these are all reasons we were given by people at the university of why we couldn't or shouldn't do the thing we were going to do anyway. And I was giving this talk at the Open Data Institute in London once. I didn't plan to give a talk. I thought I was just attending and a lovely chap called Dave Tarrant sprung the talk on me and went, I'm sure you've got some slides, Chris. And I did. But, and um, someone asked a really pointed question which said, but you got past all of these problems. What did you do next? I was like, oh. And so me and the Open Data uh, programmer from Oxford University, a talented guy called Alex Dutton, sat down. We made these into a... Uh, Google document, we just brainstormed our advice. And that's um, the second link on this page here. Um, and that turned out to be a really useful document of just things we didn't know we knew because we'd made all these mistakes and learned from them. We just picked our own brains to try and work out how to help people. And so later on with open data publishing, I decided to try and do the same thing and look at how to get more value out of data you've already created. And so that what I learned from that is what this talks about. Um, this is my theory of getting value out of data. This is assuming you've created some data and you either actively or passively want other people to use it. Um, as a researcher, it might actually be very important to your career that people use it, or it might just be nice if people used it. And so these are all the reasons people might not. And Assuming that there is anyone out there in the world who would benefit and use your data, potentially, these are reasons that they might not use your data. And what's interesting about them is they're what uh, is called a hygiene factor, which means it doesn't matter how good they are, it matters how bad they are. Each one is multiplied together and, and it doesn't really go much above 1.0. Now, this is my example made up graph. You're all data scientists, so laugh at my invented numbers. But let's say this is your data set you've created. It's really valuable to a person. The, um, there's a lot, and there's a big audience as well. So there is an audience and it's valuable to them. Um, it's quite easy to grasp some of these things, but the ease of exploiting is low and the ease of discovery is zero because you've not put it anywhere anyone can find it. So it doesn't matter how good you are at everything else. Um, no one's ever going to use it because one of your factors was zero. Um, this is my quality animations. So it adds up to zero. If I was doing a public talk, I'd probably ask what the sum was uh, and have scientists roll their eyes at me and say zero. Uh, this is another graph I made up. But basically what I'm trying to say here is that doubling your efforts doesn't double the number of people who uses your data. And once you get to a certain point of effort in any of these factors, it just 
doesn't matter you can't like doubling the effort does no good whatsoever to getting more people using it it might make a few people already using it happier but it won't increase uptake because you've already solved as much as well stopping those people using it so what we did with all these things was I stood in front of uh, about 50 people from the public sector who've published open data and we brainstormed a big work Google document of just bullet points but what I've got here is some of the bullet points each of the issues of why people might not use your data and what you can do about it that was the easiest cheapest things because there's tons of things you can do with uh millions of pounds of and uh senior management buy-in and changes to policy and your lab equipment being doing everything up front like the last speaker and i dream of but realistically you're on a budget so where do you put your effort in and the key thing is you should put the effort into the place you're doing worst at not double the effort on the thing you're already doing well at and that's a really hard lesson because we often have our comfort zones and we do the thing we already like doing so the first data set um is the first reason people won't use your data is it's not useful to them there's nothing you can do about that that is just a product of you and their data so don't worry about that one that your data is what your data is and unless you're deciding in advance that you want to create data that's useful then you can't change this one if you're funded to make data that's useful to people then you should think about how to make data that's useful to them um, audience size is another one which is slightly different because while your data in itself um, only has a potential audience size if you've got uh, data about the um, opening hours of public toilets in Southampton the only real audience for that is people who need the toilet in Southampton and people may be nationally researching toilet opening hours but ultimately um, what you can do to increase your audience is to use standards which means your data is part of a larger data set which they will use so thus um, you can increase your audience size by being part of a large data set ease of discovery um, if no one can find it they will never use it so this is mostly about metadata but it's also about word of mouth it's worth tweeting it it's worth telling people about it it really is worth talking about your thing to people and making sure they know it's there um, but if they can't find it they will never use it and so it's worth searching for your own thing with the keywords you would look for use to look for it and discover you're not actually finding it because you spelled the keyword wrong or something is grasping the value i haven't i would love to have a punchier thing for this particular category but um, someone, this is a scenario when someone's landed on your metadata page, they've literally got the link to the XML and they tab on because they don't realize the data is what they need. So it's really worth making sure for humans, especially, that this data actually it's clear what it is, putting the effort into making sure the description tells someone that this would be valuable to them. Ah, one of the other suggestions we had was if it's um, if it's you're not doing a lot of these things and you really care about them and write a blog post about it but link the blog post to the metadata and link the metadata to the, the blog post so that people can actually find one from the other there's no point signposting it one way and write putting a huge description that the catalog record doesn't bother mentioning so just make sure people can immediately f find all the information they might you've created at the time they might find it useful okay so ease of exploiting is a big one and this one there's lots of parts of but we could we divided them up after we'd collected things from people into publishing documenting and communicating um there's a lot of bullet points on here but um one of the, my favorite suggestions was putting your own email address or twitter handle in the catalog record which everyone goes <gasps> but spam and it's like you're going to get spam anyway and chances are no one's going to tweet at you with things unless they care and especially if it's one thing that is your pet project that you have just spent two years of your phd on and you get a message on twitter that someone says i'm trying to use this but don't understand what this field means that's not an imposition that is like that oh my god someone's using it so once you get big and important enough that you don't have the time to answer individual questions about your work that's fine but you're, you've now got enough interest people will create their own communities or maybe you can help seed communities where they can discuss it but the first few users you 
probably want to make yourself available to. Perceived trust and reliability and quality. Um, perception is important here. We've got a problem that one of our data sets a few years ago about bus timetables was wrong for a while. Then it was fine again, but we never recovered and we ended up giving up on the service because once it, it's been wrong for a while, everyone learned it was wrong and it couldn't be trusted. And once we got it fixed again, we had no route to easily tell them we've identified this problem, it has been addressed. And so people had just already moved on to using other systems and it was untrusted. So making sure that you provide a way not only to make your data good and trustworthy and people understand where it's come from, that it will be kept up to date, how errors or corrections will be handled, but make them actually know it's true. And that is as important as doing it. Horribly, it's, making them believe it's true is more important than actually doing it, but you should definitely make your data good as well. Um, and this is a similar one, which is the uh, not invented here syndrome. I don't want to be using data from Oxford University because I don't want to give them credit. We should be using the Southampton data and the Southampton API and um, the Southampton standard, not the Oxford standard and things. And anyone who's worked with academics will know some are really relaxed and others have that definite. We should be using our own dog food at, even when it doesn't make sense to. So some of the advice in the public sector was the, that's a senior management thing. So talk to your junior colleagues at other places, share data just and ideas between your peers who are below the standard where you care about the politics and you just want to do stuff. But also sometimes shoving university logos all over a service can actually put people off. When we created equipment.data, we made the slightly difficult decision to really, really downplay Southampton's involvement in it initially, because um, we don't we didn't want to see it as other people using a Southampton service. We wanted to see it as Southampton providing a national service and just trying to understand the politics you're running into. So the other thing is that last one, perceived neutrality, I added after a question in a talk once because I hadn't thought of that one. And there's always a factor you haven't thought that's stopping people use your data. But the overall thing I'd encourage you to do is look at what you've done and if people are not using it, I'll, um, about for this project or the next project. So I'd have a think about what your um, things that you're doing that you're not doing at all and how you can do those better, not double down and try. If you already have good metadata, the time spent writing better metadata isn't half as valuable as the time uh, tweeting it to a bunch of people or even do, um, looking on Twitter for people who are working in the field and mentioning that you've got this thing they might look, like to look at and being a bit uh, proactive. This kind of thing is um, out of people's comfort zones and that's why you end up doing more of the thing in your comfort zone. But identifying and identifying that missing hygiene factor the one that you just can't haven't imagined yet that's always going to be easier for other people than you so multiple pairs of pairs of eyes are useful okay so those are those links again and i'm seems like i've come in under time then if i'm not getting my time warning but um i'm happy to uh, add to these. These are living documents as well. We haven't updated them in a, a couple of years now because um, I've been concentrating on other things, but we're all learning all the time and any ideas you have of ways to make this better, very welcome. <laughs>